Hi, my name is Bradley Dilger. I'm one of the leaders of the Crow team. Dr. Nielsen and I have worked together to teach grant writing classes in the past, so she asked me to make this short video about the Crow team's approach to grant writing. I'm happy to share that with you in this unlisted video. I'll be looking at the comments of this video for a week or so, and I hope you'll ask questions and offer me ways to improve this video so I can make a second version to share more broadly with the public. A little bit about myself. I'm a professor in the Department of English. I teach professional writing, graduate studies, and composition. Here's my contact information. I encourage you to get in touch with me if I can help you with any of your grant writing work in the future. Crow is one of the research projects that I work with extensively. I started the Crow project with Shelley Staples in 2015, and three years later, we created the first version of the Crow system, which is a web-based tool that blends a corpus of student writing with a repository of the texts, handouts, and assignments that shape that writing. It's the first writing tool of its kind. Crow is also the interinstitutional team that creates these web-based tools and conducts research with them. We're very interested in best practices for creating research teams that are ethical and sustainable, borrowing from some of the practices that shape research in the natural sciences, but addressing some of their shortcomings with the hopes of making more sustainable, long-term valuable research. The Crow team writes a lot of grants. We've been lucky to win two large grants from Humanities Without Walls and the American Council of Learned Societies, and quite a few internal grants at the University of Arizona, Purdue University, and North Carolina State University. On this slide, I'm sharing the eight-part process that we use across the Crow team to write grants. We find a viable RFP, we carefully read and annotate that RFP, we plan and divide the work across our team, we write a rough, rough, rough abstract budget and narrative, we then revise that abstract budget narrative and other components in multiple drafts working across our team, we get a review from somebody outside the Crow team and then revise extensively, submit the grant and index all the grant materials, and then follow up with the funder to revise the grant in the future and update our grant strategy. Let's go through each of these steps with a little more detail. First, we find a viable RFP thinking about the fit for Crow on both the short and the long term. You can use tools like Pivot or the Foundation Directory to find RFPs that might be a good fit for your project. Skim the RFP and look for language that you use and things that you value. Look at the eligibility criteria and ask, is this a good fit for you? Look at recent winners and see if they are in your field or are the types or doing the types of projects that you're interested in. Ask yourself, can this budget and this time frame work for me? Second, once you've settled on an RFP, annotate the RFP carefully, building documents that help you write an effective grant. Reading and annotating the RFP is essential. Now, this might seem obvious, but multiple grant writing books say this explicitly. Too often, people read the RFP quickly and try to skip right to the writing. We avoid this on the Crow team by working as a group to carefully read, annotate, and discuss the RFP, building checklists and other documents that help us do a good job of matching our strengths to the funder's criteria. I suggest you imagine this in two moves. You'll read for the seven things listed on this slide and at the same time, build the six items, documents, that support effective grant writing. The idea here is to turn your reading into tangible products that you can share with other people to give you feedback on your process. So, think about funder priorities, deadlines, specific instructions, proposal components, helpful resources, uncertainties, and your team's strengths and weaknesses. Turn this reading into calendars, to-do lists, other things to read, evaluation instruments, both those provided by the funder and ones you create for yourself, questions to ask other people on your team, and questions for the program officers. The idea here is to turn reading into something that you can take forward to other people for review and comment. Step three. Plan and divide the work. 
everything that Crow does is collaborative. So we use a project management system to break up big projects into smaller tasks, assign them, and ensure that they're done on time. We do this because we value teamwork so much. We're simply better at doing our job if we do it collaboratively. Even if you're working individually, you can still do some of this. Break the grant down into subtasks. Assign those tasks to yourself and to other people that you may be able to work with, and rotate responsibilities, if you can, among partners. If you're working with other people who are writing different grants, you can take turns focusing on your grant and their grant to get fresh eyes on your work. Make sure you schedule in adequate time to step away from the grant and then come back to read and review with fresh eyes. In the screenshot here, you can see in our project management system how we've broken down writing an article into multiple steps over time and assigned different people to different steps. Of course, the process of writing an article is a little different than writing a grant, but there's a lot that transfers. For Crow, grant writing is so important that we use it as one of the key ways we help student researchers understand both writing research and professional writing, which again, is one of my fields. If you're interested in the ways that we leverage grant writing in this way to help students professionalize, I invite you to read our SIGDOC 2020 presentation. I'll put a link in the comments of this YouTube video. Step four, Crow loves to write very, very rough drafts. This is one of my academic superpowers, writing a discovery draft that just gets stuff down and that I can share with other people. We do this for the abstract, the budget, and the narrative. You may know another name for these discovery drafts from Anne Lamott and her lovely book, Bird by Bird. Now, this semester, I've been trying to clean up my language a bit, so I'm gonna stick with discovery draft, which I also like because it's optimistic and it echoes the Bauer model of scholarship used at Purdue University. Lamott says, get things down on the paper. We can't thank her enough for the brilliant gift that she's given us with the idea of a draft that's just getting things down. Now, where we differ with Lamont, she suggests that these early drafts are private. We don't. We embrace mutual sharing and brainstorming. We recognize it's different to get used to the idea of sharing a draft that you know isn't very good. But if you do, you can compare your draft to other people and learn a lot about strengths and weaknesses and make the writing better very quickly. One way to describe this, adapting Lamont's language. First is the downdraft, just get things down. Next is the updraft, fix things up. And third is the across draft, read across every line on your grant to think about ways to make it better. Again, this is my academic superpower. I've gotten really comfortable sharing grants, other types of writing, basically anything that I write. I'm very happy sharing it with other people, getting feedback, writing another draft, getting feedback, and making things better over time. This isn't normal for a lot of academics. We learn to write one draft, revise it, and turn it in. But I'd like to encourage you to adapt this model, try it out, and see if it works for you. Step five, once you've gotten a set of rough drafts for your project, break your project into components and write across all of the components, creating drafts of each one. Again, multiple drafts shared early and often will move your writing much more quickly than one or two drafts. Think about it this way. If you have 10 hours to work on a project, don't spend five hours on two drafts. Spend four hours on two and a half drafts, or 10 hours, or one hour, excuse me, on 10 drafts. This is adapting some of the principles from design thinking that we talk about in other materials on the Crow website. When we've done a lot of collaborative writing, sometimes we get to what we call a revision rainbow with multiple colors of suggestions, highlights, comments, and just mess. On the one hand, this is hard to read through. But on the other hand, when we get to this point, we know that we're talking through the ideas and finding the best ones and pushing them forward so our writing gets better. And that's the point. Step six, get external review of your grant. A fresh perspective is absolutely essential for you to revise effectively. Now, you can't just hand your grant to somebody and say, hey, what do you think? You've got to set this up a little bit. Put some time in your schedule 
to make sure that the person you'd like to read and review your grant has the time to do it. This also gives you the time for a little bit of a break. Share your annotated RFP and a one-page summary of the key things that you're trying to get the funder to understand about your project. When it's time to talk about the grant, consider scheduling a video conference. This can be a lot easier for your reviewer than putting things in writing. And offer to reciprocate by reading their projects, or maybe take, take your friend out to lunch or give them a small gift. And a thank you note can be useful and effective for their retention, tenure, and promotion. Step seven, after you've revised your grant based on feedback, it's time to submit the grant. But before you get much further, index your work thinking term. Here's a screenshot from the Google Drive that Crow uses to manage its grant projects. You can see there's lots of documents here. There's only three that show on screen. The list is actually eight long because there are eight components for this grant. For each component, we note the beginning, the draft, the final, and we describe some of the issues that we've had developing this work over time. Documenting processes in this way, noting who is involved, noting which documents are final, and then making sure everything's backed up can help you make sure that your grant work can be recycled productively on the long term. Step eight, the last step in the process, follow up with your funders. Win or lose, you need to talk to your funders and learn what you did well and what you can do better and update your strategy accordingly. If you win the grant, celebrate! But before too long, make sure you understand the reporting requirements for your grant and make sure you know how to get the funds and disperse them in a way that follows the funder's guidelines. If you don't win the grant, ask for feedback. Use this feedback to shape your grant strategy so future grants are improved. And keep writing. Grant writing is difficult and success rates are very low. You simply have to keep sending grants out the door to get funded for your project over time. Thanks for listening and thanks again to Dr. Nielsen for asking me to give you this presentation. I hope you'll share any feedback or questions in the comments of this unlisted video. I'll pay attention and I look forward to seeing what you think about the Crow grant writing process and how you can adapt it to your own work.